Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. In the history of life on Earth, all highly diverse and successful animal groups start out small, with the mammals being no exception to this. Despite being a major modern clade that contains a staggering amount of species that range from bats to blue whales, the earliest relatives of mammals that resembled living forms first appeared during the late Triassic and were small, minor shrew-like animals. These were the mammalia forms, a group of derived synapsids that developed from the earlier probinonathian cynodonts, which were already quite mammal-like in appearance. Internally, these animals were moving closer to a more mammalian form of anatomy, building on earlier evolutionary trends within synapsids, including the gradual development of a bony secondary palate, the acquisition of endothermy among mammalia morphs, which emerged prior to the origin of crown mammals by at least 30 to 50 million years, and a progression towards a more erect limb posture, which would increase the animal's stamina by avoiding carrier's constraint. However, the latter process was slow and erratic, with many modern mammals still possessing semi-sprawling limbs, including monotremes, as well as many small insectivorous placentals. Another important mammaliform trait was the reduction of the many bones in the lower jaw. In earlier synapsids such as Dimetrodon, the dentary bone formed about the first half of the lower jaw, with the rear half being made up of the angular, surangular, prearticular, and articular bones. However, in mammalia forms, the dentary began to form the majority of the jaw, with the other bones greatly reducing in size and eventually shifting to a position within the mammalian ear. While mammalia forms first appear in the fossil record by around 227 million years ago, at the beginning of the Norian stage of the late Triassic, the timing of crown group mammal divergence is controversial and poorly understood, as we'll see a bit later. The oldest known forms may have been animals such as Adelo Basilius, a tiny shrew-like insectivore native to Texas circa 225 million years ago. Distinct cranial features, such as the structure of the cochlea, indicate that this genus was something of a transitional form between more basal non-mammaliform cynodonts and mammaliforms proper. Another potential basal form was Synoconodon, from the early Jurassic of China, a fairly generalised animal about the size of a brown rat and weighing up to 500 grams or 18 ounces. Synoconodon would have looked a lot like the more derived mammaliforms, but its internal anatomy was notably quite basal. Like most other non-mammalian tetrapods, such as modern reptiles and amphibians, it would have replaced some of its teeth many times throughout its adult life while also growing slowly and continuously until the time of its death. Like living monotremes, this animal almost certainly laid small leathery-shelled eggs, as did most ancient mammaliforms from this time. Meanwhile, a more major and derived lineage, the Morganucodonts, appeared slightly later, about 210 million years ago near the end of the Triassic. These were a widespread and long-lived group of mostly small shrew-like forms, with their remains having been found in Europe, Southern Africa, North America, India, and China, between the late Triassic and potentially the beginning of the Cretaceous. Most were small and insectivorous, although some, such as the early Jurassic Paciodon from the UK, were rat-sized and may have been more carnivorous. The well-known type genus, Morganucodon, displays many of the characteristic traits of the group, some of which are much like those of modern mammals. It was found to possess a pattern of tooth loss that involved baby teeth being replaced only once by a set of permanent adult teeth, while its jaw was approaching the condition seen in so-called true mammals, with the dentary bone forming the vast majority of the lower jaw. There is also evidence that it had specialised glands used for grooming, which strongly indicates that, like present-day mammals, it had a furry coat. It is also highly likely that female Morganucodon were able to lactate in order to feed their young, which went through a toothless stage in their infancy. Like monotremes, members of Morganucodonta probably lacked nipples, with their milk leaking out of specialised patches on the belly. However, unlike crown group mammals, the upper and lower molars did not occlude properly, and it has recently been found that these animals possessed metabolisms that were significantly slower than similarly sized modern mammals and that they had lifespans more like those of reptiles, with the oldest known specimen of Morganucodon being 14 years old when it died. For comparison, modern shrews usually live for between 1 and 3 years. In addition, in the period in which the Morganucodonts were first appearing, it's thought that mammalia forms underwent a so-called nocturnal bottleneck, wherein most forms became adapted for a largely nocturnal, burrow-dwelling existence. 
Presumably this was to avoid competition with the rapidly radiating non-avian dinosaurs, although some species of these were nocturnal and crepuscular as well. This period of nocturnal adaptation can still be seen in many traits found in living mammals, including genetic selection for greater endothermy to keep warm during the cool of the night, sensitive whiskers to aid in orientation, generally limited visual acuity when compared to birds and other sauropsids, as well as poor colour vision in most forms. Another major group of mammalia forms were the docodonts, which first appeared during the early Jurassic and persisted into the early Cretaceous. With complex molar teeth superficially similar to those of crown mammals, docodonts were initially known almost entirely from isolated teeth and were assumed to be stereotypical small shrew-like animals. However, more recent finds from Jurassic Age deposits in China have shown that this clade was actually highly diverse, including mole-like, otter-like, and arboreal squirrel-like forms. With elongated lower jaws, muscular limbs, and strong tails, docodonts were well suited for digging and swimming niches. Indeed, probably the most famous of these animals, Castor cauda, was a semi-aquatic otter-like genus native to China during the Middle Jurassic, roughly 164 million years ago. Known from a very well-preserved holotype specimen that includes elements such as hair and other soft anatomical features, Castor cauda was about the size of a modern ferret, weighing up to 800 grams or 1.8 pounds. A streamlined swimmer with slick, oily fur and a beaver-like flattened tail, this genus was well adapted for a piscivorous lifestyle, seeing as its teeth were sharp and curved backwards in order to entrap fish, much like those of seals and early cetaceans. Like the platypus, it possessed a sprawling gait, and the holotype has sharp spurs positioned at the rear ankles, which could have been venomous. It lived in a cool, temperate, forested ecosystem, alongside early Maniraptoran dinosaurs such as Epidexipteryx and Pedopenna, as well as other docodonts like the arboreal tree shrew-like Agilodocodon. Other Chinese docodonts were similarly specialised, including the genus Docophosaur, a tiny burrowing golden mole-like animal with shovel-like digits well suited for digging and a cylindrical stubby body. Discoveries such as this helped to dispel the notion that mammal relatives were not especially diverse during the Mesozoic, with the slow metabolisms of docodonts being no impediment to their high anatomical diversity. They may have been closely related to another group of mysterious Jurassic mammalia forms, the Shuotheriids, which possessed very similar looking molar teeth. Traditionally, Shuotheriids were thought to be basal cousins of the monotremes, thus making them crown group mammals although recent studies have disputed this. Another highly controversial mammaliform group, one that I've mentioned a few times on this channel before, are the Haramyodons. These superficially rodent-like animals first appear during the late Triassic and possess teeth and jaws that were similar to those of the multituberculates but less derived. The oldest known forms such as Haramyavia from Raetian age deposits in Greenland were insectivorous and quite shrew-like although its incisors were already slightly enlarged and forward-pointing. Some paleontologists have found such similarities to multituberculates and gondwanotheres to be the result of convergence, with the very early Haramyavia-like species being mammaliaforms. The Euharamyodons, a group of more derived and often squirrel-like forms from later in the Jurassic, are often thought to be true mammals, close to multituberculates within Allotheria. However, a very interesting recent study by Mao et al. has found that Haramyodons represent a grade of basal Allotherians, leading up to the Euharamyodons, as well as to the Maltese and Gondwanotheres. The paper found that the entirety of Allotheria should be located within mammalia forms outside the mammal crown group. If this is true, then Allotheria was an incredibly long-lived and successful clade, stretching from the late Triassic to the late Eocene at least. Exactly where and when the so-called true mammals emerged is another source of contention, although the tiny early Jurassic genus Hadracodium is often thought to be a potential close cousin, comparable to the living Etruscan shrew in size, which is one of the smallest modern mammals. Hadracodium weighed just 2 grams, or 0.071 ounces, and was as long as a paperclip. Native to southwestern China, this animal possessed a relatively large brain for its body size, and was initially thought to have had a very mammal-like inner ear structure, although this has recently been found not to be the case. It probably fed mostly on soft-bodied invertebrates, with the teeth not being well adapted for crushing. Hadracodium has often been classified as a close relative of crown mammals, 
Although, as with everything I've already mentioned in this video, this is not set in stone. Crown group mammals seem to have emerged during the Jurassic, although trying to work out which species should or shouldn't be included is very difficult. Some of the earliest potential members include the mysterious Australosphenidans, which are known only from isolated teeth and jaw fragments, complete with three crowned tribosphenic molars. First appearing during the Middle Jurassic, and widespread across the Southern Hemisphere, these animals are sometimes thought to be close relatives of monotremes, though this too is of course controversial. Whatever they were, Australosphenodons do seem to have been crown mammals. Similarly, the mostly carnivorous Eutraconodonts are often considered to be basal mammals as well. The ancestors of more familiar groups, such as monotremes, metatherians and eutherians, start to appear in the fossil record at the end of the Jurassic and the early Cretaceous, which was also around the time when the more basal mammalia forms began to disappear. However, if multitubercules and gondwanathes are to be found outside the crown group, then basal mammalia forms had a much longer history. Thanks for watching everyone. The next episode will be bringing out the big guns. That's right, we'll be looking at the early evolution of the sauropods, the largest land animals to ever live. See you again soon. Cheerio.